Hi guys, I'm Shelley and I was tagged by the wonderfully talented Jen Campbell, author of the Bookshop book, to do her About a Time and Place book tag. Something big has happened in your life, you know exactly where you were and how you felt in that moment. There are certain books that that is true for too, that you read them at a certain time, a certain place, and when you look at that book, that moment is stuck in your brain. It may even manifest itself in the book, because if you took it on holiday, it may be full of sand if you dropped it in the sea, or in my case, usually in the bath. So the tag is to find 10 books on your bookshelf that have a certain time and place and memory to them. I stared at my bookcase and just thought, oh, I remember that moment. I read it when that was happening. And so let's dive straight in, starting with 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Now, this book and me have a seriously long history. I heard about this book, believe it or not, I was at a Stargate SG-1 convention. Yeah, I'm a big, big Stargate fan. Stargate is a sci-fi TV series and I went to a convention and the actor who played Skara, who I had a massive crush on at the time, um, was talking about this book and how brilliant it is and so I went out and bought this book straight away because, you know, he told me to. I got through the first 50 pages and gave up because it was so dense and then I tried again a couple of years later. I think I've tried to read this book about four or five times. I finally finished it last year. I'm still not really sure what it's about. It's a family history saga kind of book. I get very confused. I could do with a family history or a family tree with this book. That would be great. Every time I look at it, I can't help but think of the actor who plays Sara, who is Alexis Cruz, Stargate convention, and just sat there thinking, I must read this book because the guy I have a crush on is talking about it. So, you know, pressure, peer, crush power. Crush power! I bought this book because of crush power. Then we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Like many books that I'm about to tell you about, I do my best reading when I'm sick, when I'm really ill and I'm stuck in bed and I get engrossed in a story. This was one of those moments. It was uh, an autumn November-y time. Mockingjay had just come out and lots of people were talking about it and how good it was and so I started the series by buying the first book. I read it in about 10 seconds flat, technically 24 hours, and bought Mockingjay and Catching Fire and like put them on priority to get posted the next day. I was like, can they come here? Can they come here? Just devoured them. Uh, the Hunger Games will always mean me being sick, but also getting through and not having to think about being sick. I was just engrossed in this story and being really happy about it. And we have a really good memory of childhood, which is Green Smoke by Rosemary Manning. As a child, me and my family used to go on holiday to Morganforth in Cornwall, down in the southwest of England. This book is about Cornwall. It's about a young girl who goes on holiday with her mum and her dad and she finds a green dragon in a cave who has a tendency to steal her lunch. <laughs> he has a thing for cakes and her mum gives her a cake for elevenses every day and he's always trying to steal it. They talk about King Arthur and Tintagel and kind of all the histories of that. Because I went to Cornwall on holiday, I went to the places that are mentioned in this book and I saw them. Forgot how much this means to me and it has really good memories for me. Next up is a poetry book and it's Every Man's Poetry by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Truth be told, it's a particular poem from the In Memoriam AHH section. It's called Dark House. I read this for my English literature uh, GCSE. It is about walking into a house where somebody has just passed away and all their stuff is around them and their presence is there, but they're not there. My nan had just died as I was reading this and as I was going through my GCSEs. This poem just really kind of reminds me of walking into my nan's house. All her things are there, all her books are there. This poem just completely takes me back there within seconds. Next up is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabotsky, which is the story of Charlie, who is in his freshman year at school. He is a wallflower, he doesn't fit in, but he finds a group of people that are also wallflowers and pride themselves in being under average or just about average or something like that. I started reading this, I believe, in the spring of 2012, but I didn't finish it until the summer. Why I remember this book is because I read it while well, on a long weekend staying at a partner's house at the time. I was completely enthralled with this relationship I was in 
and reading this book at the same time and it's just got this nice kind of cosy little fluffy probably rose tinted to be honest memory in my head and just lying in bed reading well I think he was playing at the piano at the time I can't remember just it reminds me of the sky and it reminds me of this particular long summer weekend and who doesn't like a nice rose tinted memories now and again we've all got to have them no surprise here that one of the books is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. How could I not put this in? It's the story of Hazel who deals with thyroid cancer and she meets a guy in support group named Augustus Waters who also has had cancer and they get this friendship relationship and it's about their story. I heard the first chapter read out by John Green on the Vlogbrothers channel. I read this over two or three days I think. The ending bit I read on top of Brandon Hill. It was a summer afternoon and I was lying in the grass surrounded by all these other people who didn't know what I was reading and didn't know the emotions I was going through. All this emotion was going on while I was sat in public and I was just like <laughs> all these people eating ice creams and playing and having fun and there was actually a couple making out quite near me which reminded me of Hazel and Gus at the same time and yeah, I will forever be on that hill and I will forever be in the last hundred pages of The Fault in Our Stars. Harry Potter! No surprise, everybody of my age or a little bit younger or a little bit older will probably have a Harry Potter in their collection of I remember when I read this. I came to it a little late and it was already out on audiobook by the time that I got it. And I was really, really sick. Again, I do my best reading when I was really sick and I'd actually gone to bed for, oh, I can't remember, about a month, month to two months, I was really ill and just, I couldn't get out of bed. My mum got me the audiobooks read by Stephen Fry and that is all I did. I listened to Harry Potter, I devoured that damn story but Stephen Fry's voice and him getting me through that horrible time. I then remember the later books and them getting delivered and reading them straight away and trying to devour them quicker than my friends. It was always like, oh you have to read yet, have you got to this part yet, have you got to this part yet? I was quite a slow reader. But the Harry Potters will always be linked to the months that I slept, the narcolepsy months. Dear Fatty by Dawn French. Now I don't know where or when I was when I read this but I know how it made me feel. I wasn't very confident at the time I was going through some emotional problems and this just brought it out of me and made me feel so much joy. This is Dawn's story as she becomes a writer, a comedian, an actress. She grows up to be this wonderful, wonderful woman with many, many talents. She has this amazing amount of confidence in herself and I needed that at the time and she kind of gave that to me. She has a list inside this book that I love, which is a list of every single person she's ever kissed. And at the time, the list went to 47. I was in a place where I didn't think I would ever be kissed and I just thought, well, why the hell wouldn't I have a list like this? I want a list like this. I want my 47 people that I've kissed and, and more please. I've always dealt with self-image issues and so does Dawn. And so we have that in common and she's just like, looks herself in the mirror and just like, <laughs> You're fabulous, you look gorgeous, stuff it. It just kind of filled me with that confidence and I love this book. Last but not least, I don't have a copy of it here, but it's The List of My Desires by Gregor Delacorte. The story behind this book is that I didn't plan to buy it. It is covered in rainbow buttons if you've never seen it and oh man, I just fell in love with the cover. And so I picked it up, got home and I'm just thinking I really shouldn't have bought this, it was just a daft buy. And I sat on that sofa over there and I thought I'll just read the first hundred pages. And I put on an album that um, I just picked up as well from a band that I wasn't planning on seeing called Winter Mountain. They were a support band for somebody else I went to see and the two things melded together and I fell in love with this book that I wasn't planning on reading and I fell in love with this band that I wasn't planning or didn't even know I was going to see. And it's just this lovely summary memory of two things, completely unplanned, melding together. I'm still in love with both. In fact, it's one of my favourite books and it, they are one of my favourite bands. And I will always remember that particular moment. And those are my ten books that have certain moments attached to them and memories and yes. I would love to know ten books that mean something to you and the stories behind them. So I'm tagging everybody I know to do this video. I will put some links down to people below. But if you're watching this, please, please do it. Because I think we have so many gorgeous stories behind the books we read and why we read them and the effect they have on us and what we were doing when we were reading them. So comment down below on a particular book in a moment or send me a video or do the tag, any of it. Anyway, I'm 
rambling on. I've made this video a couple of times now and each time it's been scrambled so fingers crossed it goes okay this time and this is actually the ending of the video and yeah I hope you guys are good and I will see you guys soon. Bye!